Welcome back to the Ari Hoffman Show on Talk Radio 570 KVI. If you missed any part of the show, you can always get the podcast over at Google, Apple, Spotify, whatever your preferred podcast platform is. Remember while you're there to rate, subscribe, and share, so that way you and your friends don't miss a minute of the show. You guys might remember the band, which, you know, there was this whole big controversy about 18 months ago where one of their members from from Mumford & Sons posted about Andy Noe's book, the editor of the Post, editor-at-large of the Post Millennial, and enjoyed it. And then all of a sudden, everybody came after him. Antifa came after him. People in the media came after him. It was absolutely ridiculous. And joining us now in the genuine Autoglass studio line is Winston Marshall, co-founder of Mumford & Sons, who now hosts Marshall Matters over at a podcast for The Spectator. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Ari, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Such a pleasure to have you. So first, I got to tell you is that I saw you in concert when you guys were playing with U2 in Seattle. And oh, I'm more wow. of an arena rock guy. And at the concert, my wife loves you guys. And then at the concert, I remember turning to my wife afterwards and I go, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I enjoyed Mumford and Sons more than you too. And she was shocked that I even said that. So just wanted to let you know, you guys did a phenomenal job. You're just job saying that. that. You're I am just not saying just saying that, that, my friend. If this was not. Bono on the line, you'd be saying <laughs> how shocked you were that you enjoyed you 2 more than Mumford. <laughs> I will say, I will say we left 20 minutes early from you 2 I will say that. Okay. That's so you know, I'm not making this up. Okay. <laughs> Nonsense. So. You had to get, you got to free the babysitter at home. That's why. That's <laughs> okay. I actually remember that show and, and thinking, you know, I wasn't necessarily a huge U2 fan. I, I certainly respected them and liked some of the songs, but I probably would never have gone to a show otherwise. And I, I remember uh, we did about three shows of them a, a lot down the West Coast in those stadia. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, because they had a huge screen at the back and the, and the songs just filled that giant space. And I just remember thinking how incredible it was. And I, I had several euphoric possibly transcendental moments just watching them and and i i think i finally really understood you too you know she's there just absolutely incredible they did a great show for me it was i loved all the oldies and everything like that second half of the show was not really what i was expecting so that's when we kind of checked out of there but <laughs> more about you because you know what i'm implying by that whole thing so you ran Andy Noe's book, which is about the chaos here in Seattle, about the chaos that Antifa caused. I've read it myself many times, use it as a reference point. And then all of a sudden you had to do an apology. I mean, what what happened from your perspective with all that? Well, yeah, as you'll know from the book, that it documents well the activities, not just of Antifa and anarchist groups, but also what happened in Seattle, in Portland. I think July 2020, the federal courthouse was under siege for the entire month. Throughout that year, the BLM riots, uh, well, in the first two weeks of the BLM riots, 19 people were killed in the first 14 days, a majority of whom were black. Many businesses destroyed, as you know. Uh, uh, across the country and um, uh, many of those businesses are black and this was for a movement that purported to be for black lives now back in the music industry where I was working and still work I should say um, uh, BLM was a sacred cow you could not criticize it at all and it turns out Antifa now uh, this is where my naivety had come in I think so in the pandemic through COVID I was I was tweeting on my social media about the various books I was reading from Mao's Little Red Book, a book, I should say, that inspired the the, the killing of 60 million people. But that wasn't controversial uh, to Tolstoy's War and Peace and everything in between. And one of those books was Andy Noe's book on Mast about, as I've just described, and it somehow and I see it as an act of God now, um, uh, it just blew up and it was a it was a. It became a new segment on everything from The View to Tucker Carlson. And it was on, you know, newspapers across my country and yours. I just I couldn't quite believe it. And and I probably would have if it if it just been me, I'd have just ignored it or something. But I guess this is where Twitter becomes real life, because I don't think it is real life. But then it becomes it. You get the phone calls, you get people calling up and 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 saying war then you get people professional you you know you're working with and, and and i just saw my life unraveling and so i decided to issue an apology partly because i was open to being wrong about it i was open to n n perhaps not knowing the whole story and um i also wanted to protect my band we were being told that radio stations would drop us uh i was told that by one well actually one festival dropped me without telling me 
Uh, I later found out it was because of this incident. And um, uh, so I, I wanted to, you know, calm them, calm the the fires, I guess. And um, and then in the in the over the sort of next two or three months that um, proceeded after that, I looked more and more into this topic. I, I really, um, uh, you know, looked into the the book, the the author, that what was going on in America, and and um, and I decided I had been right that the book was an important book. That the author was a brave author. In fact, he was attacked again by Antifa thugs in Portland, Oregon, in that uh, time. And I decided, I by apologizing, and that apology really bothered me. I was part of the lie, so I I was in a position where I had I had nothing I could do but quit the band and retract my apology. We're talking with Winston Marshall, co-founder of Mumford & Sons, who now has his podcast, Marshall Matters, over for The Spectator. You can get it on all podcast platforms. Would you say that you regret the apology in hindsight or more regret that it became an issue? Or are you happy you spoke out about it? What are your feelings now looking back on what happened? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, to be honest, regret is, a, for me, a pointless um frame of mind so you know i am where i am it is what it is and i move forward i i um i did whilst i'd issued the apology and not retracted the apology then there was growing not just regret but uh so even anguish and i know that sounds um dramatic but i i it really that 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 apology i felt like it it was it it, ha it hung around my neck in that Whatever I were to do afterwards, if, whatever songs I were to write, whatever prose I were to write, whatever I was to create, whatever I was to say would be undermined by the fact that I had apologized publicly for something that when I'd done nothing wrong. So so that's why I had so I guess you could say I regretted at that point. Um, uh, but that's why I felt obliged. My conscience obliged me to retract the apology and and quit. And And so but now looking back. 18 months later, as you say, I'm building a new life. I've got a new podcast. I'm still making music. It is what it is. It's it's a very sad how it ended with Mumford and Sons. But I'm I look back and we did 14 wonderful years. We made four great albums, a bunch of EPs, toured the world, and we made music that I'm really proud of. I love um that music uh, still now. And um and so you know it is what it is. You've got music on my playlist, which is very rare if you know that like it's Metallica and Aerosmith and Bon Jovi and then you guys. It's like, what doesn't belong here? But then I got your music <laughs> there too. So yeah, I mean, my wife said to me, she goes, you got to make sure to mention that comment you made to me on the way out of that U2 concert because he's not going to believe it and he'll like that. So <laughs> let me ask you this, is that you got a lot of hate, you got a lot of attacks and you don't have to name names in this next question, but did you get a lot of support? Of people who may not have done it publicly, but people who called you, people who reached out to you and said, I I may disagree with you on the book, but I appreciate you speaking your mind or I agree with you on the book, whatever the case may be. Did you get a lot of support too? That's yes, I certainly did. And and it, support came from the, the most surprising of, of um places. And and I, I, I would be careful not to name um names because I don't want to get people in trouble seeing how how much trouble I got in, into. Um but uh, not only did I get support from um many uh, uh friends that uh you know that in my own life and and uh but i also there were artists that i consider all-time great artists who went out their way to to reach out to me um and some of whom said well i read the book what's the fuss about um uh having said that now that i know there is a bit of a fuss around it I, I, as i said i won't mention it but w one thing i learned is that um for when it comes to friends i got support from uh, the, the friends that i'd hoped would turn up the most turned out they didn't turn up and the and at, and then from within my friends as well the, the it, support came from the least expected people and which is actually quite a wonderful thing now at the time it was quite a painful uh, experience and and um but now looking back I, I really know who who those people are that I can trust in in that um and uh, having gone through such a difficult experience so so there's many blessings you know so looking back at it now, you go forward. What are you doing with yourself? You said you're still making music. You have this podcast. Why'd you start the podcast? Well, I feel like seeing as I've now come out on such a controversial issue, uh, 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 I felt like it's almost a responsibility and a duty for me to 
explore these taboo topics, these difficult issues. And I had so when I published my um my letter explaining why I quit the band, I had hundreds, if not thousands, of messages of people saying they're self-censoring. And there are so many of these taboo topics, or t- topics around COVID, BLM, as I've said, um, anti-Semitism and Palestine, Israel, and uh, Hunter Biden's laptop is, is another one I just reminded of, of this week. There's just so many of these topics that people feel like they have to keep quiet, whether at, whether at their workplace or um, community spaces or whatever it is. I feel like it is the responsibility of people like you, Ari, and me, uh, you know, you at your radio station and, and me um, at my podcast to explore these issues. So the people who who um, feel like they can't talk about them easily are able to explore them with you, and hopefully we can dial down the um, the 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 level of discourse to you know, or that rather the 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 heat around it. Um, so make it easier moving forward because I think it's all about more conversation. I'm I'm very much a First Amendment guy. One of the great things about your country, and and I think the answer to um, you know bad speech is more good speech and free speech, and and um, and so I, I I I see that as a responsibility. But also, yeah, making music. I just got a, I was in the studio yesterday with Ariel Pink, another great American musician, and, and we wrote we wrote a uh, a Christmas song together uh, called Rudolph's Laptop. Um, uh, and uh, it's about Rudolph uh, betraying Santa with uh, um, some uh, uh, his laptop getting found with a bunch of incriminating uh, evidence. Uh, but uh, um, we'll see if I can get it out before Christmas. But <laughs> I think it's, we had some fun. <laughs> I love it. That sounds awesome. In the last few minutes, we have with Winston Marshall, co-founder of Mount Mumford and Sons, and currently host of Marshall Matters podcast, which you can find over at the Spectator and all your preferred podcast platforms. So we have a lot of younger people who listen to the show. And one of them is, of course, actually two of them are my kids. And if you had a message for kids like mine who are out there struggling, you know, playing in garages or whatever it is, just trying to get those instruments right, what would you say to them if they're trying to make it in music or if they're just trying to just be a musician, even without the acclaim, even without, you know, all the money that comes with it and all the fame that comes with it? What advice would you give to musicians who are just starting out? I actually had a conversation with my cousin uh, a couple of nights ago and she's uh, a bit younger than me and she would, she she was making music and she said that she sort of stopped playing because the business side of things just made it unenjoyable for her and and I, my I found that a real shame because she's such a she's so talented and so I would say and I think of her now is just concentrate on the music make the music incredible like and that's not to say you know you be smart about the business stuff as well but but just make it about the music and remember why you love the music and make it about the songs, you know, make it about the lyrics and the melodies and, and don't get caught up in the, in the scene of things or in the business side of things. or uh, you know, th- that, that stuff is, is a distraction because you don't, and if you start compromising your music to be popular and then if the music isn't popular, then you've just compromised everything. So, so just make music you absolutely love. Winston Marshall. The podcast is Marshall Matters. You can find it over at The Spectator. You can find it on all your preferred podcast platforms. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your honesty. And thank you for discussing the tough topics because there's so few people who have the courage to do so. And we appreciate you doing that. Thank you, Ari. Thanks for having me. It's been a great pleasure. Such a pleasure. we got a whole lot more to discuss as the show continues. You're listening to The Ari Hoffman Show on Talk Radio 570 KVI.